Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Nexus Podcast with Heather and Jimmy, your breakdown of the important news in the world of Blizzard Entertainment. Old episodes are available always on nexuspodcast.com, which is on all the major platforms, Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, all the good stuff. And make sure to follow the conversation throughout the week with hashtag Nexus Podcast and old video episodes, youtube.com slash DJ Tarrant. As you can see on screen, if you're watching live or watching the video, you can see we have some special guests with us. Um, we have Leyline back with us with Jeremy De La Rosa joining us again, but also Cody Urban. How are you guys doing? <laughs> doing well. Thank you, guys. I'm super doing excited to be back. And Cody. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> Happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And uh, what we do like to do, though, uh, at the top of our show is always talk about our week in Geek, just what you've been up to lately. I know, uh, Jeremy, last time we talked, you were playing Hades a, a bunch. Um, Cody, we'll start with you since you haven't been on the show mm -hmm. um, before, but what have you been up to in the world of Geek stuff? Oh, man. Where do I begin? Uh, I have like these little DeLorean micro machines I just bought. I don't know if that's geeky enough, but you know, it's one that's from each Back geeky. to the Future. <laughs> yeah. I got one that's like Back to the Future one, one that looks like it's flying in the tires, you know, or folded down. And then one that looks, you know, it even has the red wheels on the sides. So, uh, yeah, like saw those on a Facebook fan group. I'm like, I'm getting those. They're on Amazon. They're mine now. Yes. <laughs> a needed purchase. Yes, it was. <laughs> more? More geeky stuff? I if, mean, if I, you I, want, I, how much ever you want to share? Yeah. Uh, well, I have uh, not only seen the first three episodes of WandaVision, but a whole bunch of videos about the Easter eggs <laughs> so that I see the things that I'm missing. Mm -hmm. uh, even though I'm catching most of them, I'm like, ooh, this is good. This is going to foreshadow yeah. something. Yeah, I'm very some excited really, about this show. <laughs> there's some really cool Easter eggs in it. I'm, I'm excited for how it, it expands upon it. <laughs> I was a latchkey kid that was raised by Nick at night. So I grew up watching a go. bunch yeah. of old TV shows. <laughs> I love Lucy, Dick Van Dyke. And so this is like, oh, this is my childhood, even yeah. though it predates, predates me by yeah, like exactly. 50 years. <laughs> they, I mean, they nailed that aesthetic. I was really yes. impressed. It's impressive. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. but Jeremy, how about, how about you? What have you been geeking out yeah on. i i've i've managed to steal some time away to watch some uh series and play some games not a ton but uh i think i really needed uh oh wow siri just activated by <laughs> me saying that <laughs> uh, but uh yeah in terms of watching stuff uh, i actually started to get back into the expense uh it's a series sci-fi series on amazon oh, yeah. uh, it is really well done um both storytelling, but even world building of like humanity, you know, uh, populating the solar system mm -hmm. and the dynamic between Earth, Mars, and like the asteroid uh, miners and everything. Uh, it's really cool. I, I'm very, very impressed. Um, so, yeah, I, I benched a little bit of that over the weekend. And then gaming wise, I actually started to pick up and play Control. Uh, so, that one is also really cool. It, it's a very visceral game. You know, yeah, just, it really uh, is. I I played that at the beginning of last year, and I loved every minute of it. Think like X Files meets kind of, I guess, a modern twist on that. Really, I agree. And the telekinesis is just so awesome. Just like being able to pull a boulder or like a forklift and just throw it at bad guys. Just watch them explode. <laughs> oh, yeah. God, it's so satisfying. Yeah, and uh, I, I also think you can look at that game from like a game design perspective and how it just slowly rolls out the the powers to players and how like just well done that is. Where it's like it shows you how to do this, and then you go through that kind of training room, and then the next area you're you're like, oh, we got to use this new thing we learned. It, it's it's really cool. So I'm I'm yeah. glad you, I'm glad you picked that up. That's a, yeah. that's a super fun game. Um, it's on uh Game Pass if. People are interested in playing it and have a Game Pass subscription. Mm, I didn't realize that. Oh, actually, I've also tested out Stadia. I, I'm very impressed with the tech, for sure. Uh, and the game that I tested out is uh, Avengers. And, uh, you know, I, I figured uh, it'd be a lot of fun because my, my daughters uh, mm -hmm. are really big into the Marvel movies. So they it's like a nice oh, yeah. family thing. We kind of play together and they try it out until combat comes. They're like, oh, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's been me and my kids in Kingdom Hearts. (laughs) Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I've been able to, you know, squeeze in a bit of gaming time, which is great because awesome. uh, it's nice stress relief and holy crap, I am stressed out these days. <laughs> it is yeah. it's hard to lot the business, guys. Just watch out. <laughs> it is not an easy thing as, oh, as my easy goodness. as it might be. Yeah. Oh man. Uh Heather, what about what about you? What have you been uh, up to? I haven't done a lot of gaming per se. I've done streaming. So that's been a thing I picked up. Um, I decided to dust off my webcams I've had for a couple of years and uh, start streaming. And I think it was on Calm Before the Storm that you said, like, you should get back into streaming on Crafters and Makers. And I'm like, yeah, 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 whatever. And then I'm like, why not? Like, I'm here at home. Why not? And so I started streaming on Age Sailor Moon on Twitch and uh, all my knitting and spinning that I have. And uh, it's been taking up most of my time, like a good couple hours. I got my affiliate. <laughs> followers so far so i'm like really proud of that and uh not much gaming because i caught the covid at my household so i've been sleeping if i'm not streaming so so far it's okay sleeping's okay i'll take that over anything else right now and um i did play like a half an hour sims because i got a new graphics card and so i'm like i want to see how good this looks i uploaded sims 4 <laughs> and uh there you go. looks pretty good yeah nice that's like my gaming how about you, Jimmy? Uh, yeah, as for myself, it's been the uh, typical WoW that I've been playing every week for since launch. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, it's been a lot of fun. I've been doing a lot more Mythic Plus keys and just, just trying to gear up. <laughs> That's pretty much it in WoW for me right now. Uh, but I've been playing a lot of Phasmophobia with some friends, and I'm finding that game is just amazing. And I found out it's developed by one person <laughs> like it what? is insane yeah it's one person and wow. so we we kind of got a little bit bored with the the standard game um there's a mm-hmm. beta branch you can go on to and kind of test out all the changes that they're making um and it, there's like a new build like every day so it's it's a lot of fun to kind of experience and it's just that. one developer it's supposedly one it? developer i believe yeah wow. oh my god so yeah, but it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you're if you're not too squeamish with scary games, it's it's a really fun time with friends. It's so stressful to watch you play. <laughs> like I'll watch you guys on Discord play. They'll stream for yeah. me, and I'll be like, "Hey, no, there's nothing in the bug. You guys forgot to turn yeah. it on." Like, after like three games, I'm done. And, and the other big thing yeah. I've been playing, um, and I think people who create content in gaming need to have a game like this. Not necessarily this specific game, but a game that you play that you don't create content for, uh, for that for me is Pokemon go. (laughs) Yes. I still play a lot of Pokemon go. They've, they've been doing, all right, let's be friends. Yep. Yeah. We'll we'll, we'll link up after this. We'll we'll add, add you. I'll get you his friend code. Yeah. There we go. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they've, Niantic has been putting in a lot of, um, weekly events and that's really been good for getting me to play the game every day. Uh, but also, I mean, this is a while ago now, but they've done a lot of stuff with the pandemic to make it so that it was a playable game without Mm -hmm. people being able to go outside. And I think they really pivoted really well. Um, and the remote raid features super Oh, that's so interesting. So actually you don't need to go out anymore in order to play? Uh, Not really. Wow. There's some things you have to. I am lucky enough that there is like two focus stops within range of my apartment uh, so that makes yeah, it they, really easy they expanded the range before yeah. you had to be within like 20 feet or something mm-hmm. really close yeah. and now it's like hey i'm across the street and i don't have to cross dangerous traffic to go get that focus <laughs> exactly stop. this is i hope it stays that way even after the pandemic yeah, personally I, I hope it will <laughs> yeah um <clears throat> i will say though i do really miss going out for community days because there there's some local friends we mm-hmm. would always see um at those and we'd go see a movie and get dinner or something like that and we just mm. haven't been able to do that so they should but, have poke stops at like vaccination uh, <laughs> give, give so it's like everyone goes there it's like yeah. boom yeah, and they have like a dude with a rifle dude. just shooting vaccination <laughs> give some bonus just get a QRC poke code coin sticker and throw them up there somewhere yeah. yeah that's all you have to do um, if you got the vaccination then you get an access pass to a premium raid 
<laughs> that or you get like yes. a, a shiny something. I don't know. <laughs> or that. Yeah. That so really get a Pokemon that looks in. like the virus. Oh my oh. god. <laughs> uh, I don't want to evolve that one. I'm getting though. some like good gamification <laughs> ideas. There you the go. Way. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, but yeah, that's uh, Weekend Geek for us. Um, Jeremy, for people who are tuning in the show and may not have caught the last episode that we had you on, give us your elevator pitch on what Leyline is and what you guys are doing. All right, absolutely. Um, so, hello, everybody that uh, might not have seen us before. Uh, so, yeah, Leyline is a nonprofit organization, uh, we're open source and open knowledge. And our mission is actually to just make doing good things in the real world easy, fun, and profitable. Right now, it is super hard to do good things. Like, you got to pay money and donate, or you got to go out there and spend your time and energy and skills, or you got to access your network and, like, you know, bring people in. And we just want to streamline that. And, you know, the other big thing is that there's no feedback mechanism either for the good that you do. Like, you know, what impact did it really have? How many lives did you save? Um, how much progress did you make on, you know, science or your local soup kitchen? So Leyline is actually going to pull that all together and you get to have your digital resume of all the good things you've done in the world. And we're going to gamify the crap out of it and just make it super fun, leaderboards, events, achievements, and then stack on top of that uh, tons of value like gift cards and coupon codes and free games and all this cool stuff. So uh, we really focus a lot on gamers because for gamers, it's all about like, hey, let's just gamify everything, uh, life. And instead of uh, just thinking about, hey, how do I just gamify having people stuck on their phones all day? Let's like gamify doing good in the world. And, you know, like let's have this positive sum game. So that, that's essentially what we're building. And uh, the activities can range from almost everything because our mission is to supercharge every nonprofit cause on the planet. And so you can think about the individual wellness for yourself. Like, hey, did I exercise today? Did I get proper sleep? Did I have proper nutrition? Did I you know, practice mindfulness? Um, all these things that are great for your own well-being and health. Because if you don't take care of yourself, how are you going to help others? So that's the first set of actions they can do. A section is focusing a second is focusing on community activity. So are you volunteering in a soup kitchen or helping to donate blood? Um, and then the last tier is global impact. So for example, the easiest thing you could do is actually donate your computing power to science where you can accelerate research on cancer, COVID, climate change, AIDS, Zika, like all sorts of humanitarian challenges, including like killer asteroids that are about to hit us like we can help to accelerate that search for killer asteroids um <laughs> so so we take all those activities and say okay do any of these things you could earn ley line points you could lose ley line points to redeem these rewards which could be a bitcoin gift card for 25 dollars or a blizzard gift card for 50 dollars <laughs> And that is just straight cash into your hands. And on top of that, we're also uh, building this on bleeding edge technology, which is blockchain. So if you're not familiar with this, we could talk uh, a whole bunch about uh, you know what that future holds for gamers in the blockchain, non-fungible token, and cryptocurrency world. So we're basically yes, going to make list. it. Oh, yes. All right, good. We'll talk about it. I got a lot to say. Uh, <laughs> or you know, if you have questions, et cetera. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, that, that's kind of the impetus for what we're building here. And because we've created this really positive sum ecosystem, we're going to partner with everybody and make sure that both users get a ton of value out of this for doing good things, that sponsors are throwing a bunch of stuff into the prize pool because it's valuable to them to be able to reach this audience and get the tax write-off. And then all the nonprofits do not spend a dime and they get hundreds of thousands of users like active and incentivized like forever. So that's the kind of ecosystem we're building and it's uh, it's happening. It's We're still early days and getting uh, you know warmed up, but we are ramping up quickly. And we just want to get money into people's hands because this is a crisis right now. We have an economic crisis domino effect that's taking place at the moment. So our mission is to try to eradicate poverty, just try to get as much value into the world and help people. Uh, so anyway, that's kind of the you know quick elevator pitch <laughs> and you know the whole story behind it and all that. So. If you were going to the top of a uh, two thousand story building, maybe. No. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much. That's oh the hard gosh. part. There's I so know. many layers to lay I, on. And we're is. like, we were on really for like is. almost two hours. 
uh and i know like i just dived into like downloading boink on my computer like mm. an hour or two ago and i'm like it's that simple like, <laughs> i realized i forgot i haven't done it yet on my home computer and i'm like i need to just do this and i download i log in and boom there's like i, I see asteroids at home i was wondering what the heck mm-hmm. that was um i might have that be the next one i work on my computer with What's really That's nice is you get to choose. You get to choose on yeah. there. Mm-hmm. And, and, and Boink will also scan your, your processor. Like, you know, you could do it on an Android tablet. So I've got it running on a little Android tablet of mine. And it didn't actually have all the same uh, jobs as available as a, a little bit stronger computer. But mm-hmm. uh, on a stronger computer, I'm like, oh, I've got more options. And I was able to go find one. Alzheimer's is actually a big, big one to me. Like I've lost a lot of family members to that one. And I think it's called Rosetta. It's one one of the the different jobs that you can sign up for and have it start. It gets a packet, basically. It's like, oh, hey, we need you to crunch this data. And then another computer is going to crunch this part. And maybe it'll compile it. And okay, we're building models. We're figuring out this stuff. And you can choose something that that maybe really matters to you. And when I saw Alzheimer's, I'm like, I'm choosing that one. If there's any way yeah, I can I accelerate that, a good that research. Yeah. But, but yeah. I mean, cancer or, or maybe, you know, I'm just, I, I'm really interested in getting America or not America, the world, right? Uh, all of us <laughs> to the stars, yeah. you know, it's like, <laughs> I mean, it's like, I always say that the uh, Gene Roddenberry was genius when he put during the cold war, uh, mm-hmm. A Russian man, an Asian man, a black woman, <laughs> yeah. an alien from another planet, all on the bridge of the enterprise is like saying, when we can just start to work together and get over our differences yeah. and our barriers and stuff, the sky's the limit. The stars are the limit. We could be exploring the cosmos, but we spend more energy and time on killing each other, fighting each other, how to how to divide each other. So, I mean, if you're like, you know what, I'm going to donate my processing power to support you know, mapping the stars, figuring out what's going on out in uh, in outer space. Well, then you could do that too. So it's like, you got Absolutely. some pretty cool options. And yeah. it's been around, it's been around for like 18 years. And I hadn't heard about this until last October. Like what's <laughs> yeah. going on? But the, you know, they're, they're, they're engineers at Berkeley. They're not marketing, you know, that's like, like you go to the website, oh, yeah. and oh, this, this is pretty simple. It looks like it was made in the nineties or something. You yeah, know what I mean? It's, it's like, simple. You, you can tell sure. an engineer built yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. There's no so, scientific engineer too. So like yeah. very, very heavy research. <laughs> And so uh, Ley- Leyland's and coming. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. You go. Uh, I was just say, you know, they're wonderful people, and you know, the the way our um our position is basically we're just kind of like this supercharged loyalty program for any kind of open source or humanitarian or environmental cause, and and I think that's the beauty of it is that we are just kind of targeting. Okay, what's going to have the biggest impact in the world? Because if you can imagine us accelerate so there are 2.7 billion gamers on the planet and it is going to grow another billion in the next five years easy. Mm-hmm. so how much of that energy and computing power and cognitive problem solving capability is being leveraged to fix problems for all of us on a global uh, scale and i think that's the beauty of leyline where you just see these tiny little contributions tiny and it may mean nothing for you as an individual but all together we connect everybody to just move mountains we could solve massive massive problems with very little effort we just have to come together to make it happen so i think that's the, really the focus for us is you know building these like magical connecting lines between mm-hmm. all these gamers and just people that care and that want to change the world and make it fucking easy. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> you're, you're fine. Yeah. You're totally fine. Uh, we want to make it easy and we want you to get paid for it. So it's a very powerful value proposition. And to me, it's like, why would you need to get the message out there? Because it, it might seem mm-hmm. unreal, but this is where we are with technology. Blockchain and these kind of digital assets are transforming uh, economics. And so we want to, you know, lead the charge and say, listen, we could just do a bunch of things for good. And you know what? Like our current system does not reward you doing good things or being a great parent or being a good caretaker. We're going to, you know, just put money at your head for being good. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, that's kind of the vision right now. And uh, it's exciting. It's exciting. I'm excited to see it. going through the Twitter. I saw a lot of people were getting gift cards already. Like they were bragging, like I just got an Amazon gift card or a Blizzard gift card. Yeah. Did you look at the, they just yeah. recently added, I think it was only like a couple days ago uh, on the redeem page. There's a whole bunch of new 
oh, people yeah. on there. So there's a Fortnite gift card if you want to go get the latest dance or whatever. Uh, mm-hmm. Origin, uh, Origin, PlayStation, Steve, Apple, we got Steam as well. Xbox, I mean, Steam, Blizzard, yeah, Google yeah. Play, Sephora, Chipotle. Yep. I'm eyeing that Chipotle, honestly. <laughs> I got a family of five I need to feed, so. It's true. Yeah, and, and, any, any help you can leverage from that is, is always welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. And, you know, oh, like, man. that's the thing is that, you know, we've got, we can just buy whatever we want, honestly. And because, like, a lot of our sponsors are going to give us direct uh, in-kind value, like coupon codes and free games, but some are just going to give us straight cash. And if we're going to use that cash to buy, you know, whatever gift cards our users mm-hmm. want. Uh, so the hottest items being claimed right now are Amazon gift cards. Actually, no, number one is Bitcoin gift cards and the next oh, is yeah. Amazon gift cards. So those like clear out like instantaneously as soon as we put them up. Uh, but we are constantly refilling it. So if anybody wants to be in the alpha and get early access, we are happy to hook up your community. So Leyline.gg. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good place to go. Subliminal messaging. <laughs> yeah, no, we'll do oh, it two more times um, before the podcast is over. Oh, Helen in chat was saying uh, league cards went fast as well. Mm. I can I can see that going fast. I mean, to be fair, those KDA skins are really good. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know i think that's the beauty is that you know all these uh, options are different value to different people but the number one massive opportunity is really with developing nations so you know you have to try to imagine that scenario of let's say a 25 dollars bitcoin gift card where mm-hmm. it's accessible all over the planet you can convert into any currency that you want and now imagine an individual in uh you know chile where their average salary is probably around $15 a month. So you are giving somebody two months salary with just basically, you know, clicking a button to say exercise and, you know, donating their Android smartphone computing power, and it just transforms their entire life. And then now imagine that for their family and imagine that for their community, we could do some really, really massive good in the world. So we, we're trying to just design it so it's just this engine of abundance <laughs> yeah, exactly. that keeps on going. Uh, so it's uh, it's super cool. And we, we've we uh, we've proven it out. Like, it's happening. Like, in the alpha, this core loop exists. And the sponsors are coming in, and we are working on the investors. So we're going to raise a bunch of capital. And if we're going to go big, make a bunch of money, and we're going to give it all to the people. That is the plan. We don't, we're not in it for the money. We're here to solve massive, massive problems and go exponential. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, that's the, that's the vision. We're, we're getting, we're very ambitious here and we move fast. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, Cody, um, we haven't talked with you too much, but can you tell us how you got involved with Leyline, kind of what your background is and what, I know there's a huge diverse team behind Leyline and I'm, I don't know of a better way to phrase this, but like, what are you bringing to the to the table here? What 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 are the, you the uh, money maker, man? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, for a reason. Yeah, exactly. But if does this go uh, like to SoundCloud as well? Uh, By chance, it, we we can we can put it on SoundCloud. I, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I just wondered if that if it lives on all sorts of different planes. Yeah, it, like, it does. Awesome. I know yeah. that much. So the people listening just didn't see. I made a. I, I was trying oh. to do blue, blue steel. Maybe. maybe oh, there magnet. you go. Yeah. It was, the <laughs> it was the smolder for sure. It's the smolder. So boy, um, last year uh, October, I think it was uh, our my friend Justin Smith, uh, lovingly known as Boogie. And the ley line world uh, introduced me to Jeremy. And so he's, uh, he was a friend of mine. And so he's like, okay, I gotta, I gotta meet, introduce you to Jeremy. Jeremy's the coolest guy. And he sent me the pitch deck. I'm looking at the pitch deck. I'm like, Hmm, I, I, I might get this a little bit. And then as soon as I meet Jeremy, it's like, we're going to destroy poverty and make a game out of doing charity. I'm like, how can I help? What can I do? <laughs> Sign me up. And uh, and so I, I have a background in media production. So I've worked in marketing. I've worked in news. Um, so I, I've, Jeremy was talking, yeah, I can talk candidly, but it's scripted stuff. And I'm like, you know, I've actually done pretty darn well with scripted stuff. I spent years reading off of teleprompters and things. So uh, that's where I can I can bring a little bit and uh, create some media content to help really spread the word. 
about this, hopefully put it into a language that more people will understand a little bit. Just, I mean, I, I, I hear Jeremy and it's like, boy, I, that's, I'm never going to be able to repeat that. And then, so I'm trying to <laughs> tell it to a friend and my friend's like, I, I just don't get it. And I'm like, we do a game of charity, get prizes. And she's like, should have led with that. I get that. It's like, <laughs> okay, great. So uh, make it so easy. A caveman could do it, right? Oh, that's exactly. copyrighted. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but no, that's like where I've been trying to help. Yeah, a tablet can do it. A tablet can be a part of it. And so, uh, be, being a part of the team to try to help spread the word and uh, get it out to everybody, answer questions, and try to do it in a fun video format where you know i've had things where i'm talking to an animated computer or me playing doing pulling like an eddie murphy scene where i'm playing two different characters <laughs> there you go, and, yeah yeah so uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun we have a podcast as well and uh, it's called game changers so we've been doing that wednesday nights at seven and so uh we've been bringing on a lot of the guests have been other uh folks in leyline because we just have a massively talented team from around the world we're representing a whole bunch of different countries. So many just amazingly talented folks from so many different backgrounds on this team. So we've been, they're game changers. They're a part of building Leyline, which is changing the game by adding a game to change the world. So mm -hmm. they're, we're, they're all game changers, but we've also reached out, you know, we've had some guests outside of Leyline or, or, you know, kind of like in the, the network, you know, they're a threat outside, you know? Yeah. And we've got some big guests coming pretty soon, honestly. Mm -hmm. oh, it's awesome. going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anybody, cannot spoil too much. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> I wish I could say, oh, but uh, I would say, Oh, I what? cannot say anything. It's right, gonna right, be exciting. It's gonna be exciting. Just sub right, to where, our channel. Yeah, and, where, where's, yeah. A good, where's a good place where people can find out more info when those come out? Boy, follow us on any of the social media. We definitely are posting about it all the time. Um, boy, that sounds like mm. the best, right? Well, uh, uh, yeah, Discord actually, uh, and... an easy way to go is just go to leyline.gg. On our footer, we have all of our social icons. So whatever mm -hmm. flavor you like, whether it's Discord, Twitter, Facebook, Insta, uh, we've got most of them. And whenever we push a you know content piece live, like the podcast, we'll make sure it shows mm -hmm. up on the channels. The easiest way is just sub, sub to our YouTube channel or our Twitch channel, and then you'll get there you uh, go. easy <laughs> access. Uh, but I, yeah, we'll, we'll promote those big guests. Uh, yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> um, I did want to ask about the discord channel cause I've been poking around mm. in there a little bit and you talk about this, um, openness and being just open about how the company operates and how you guys do things and open knowledge to, so that people can be a part of the community and kind of learn from experts in the field or, or what, what whatever you want however you want to call oh that. yeah absolutely yeah. uh yeah so um we're doing some you know kind of crazy stuff uh so we're practicing radical transparency which means that all, all of our key meetings like all hands meetings uh you know q a community nights um all of these like internal decision making like meetings are going to be posted publicly because we want to be as transparent as possible because that is powerful in a building trust b holding us accountable so that we know that we are a trustworthy organization and c it's actually good education because there are a lot of entrepreneurs now like we are in this massive economic transformation and we are going to see this explosion in in the digital economy so a lot of people are going to be starting new businesses and new organizations and we've got so many veterans in the industry that just want to help and a big way to help, uh, Heather, big shout out to you, is through education. So this is the value prop because like, okay, we're open source, open knowledge. Think Wikipedia. Now think of Wikipedia for the business world. Uh, we've got like people, we've got like over 300 years of accumulated experience across our team in the tech industry, in the gaming industry, in the esports industry. So, uh, and we have a lot of people that care and they just want to help people. So we are running workshops on, you know, product management, project management, leadership, strategy, marketing, development, engineering. Um, we are we actually just launched our uh, student ambassador program. So we've got twelve uh, college students that are just kicking ass right now. It's super cool. And Getting all the good get, parts. Yes. <laughs> Soon they just I started. They're doing. We'll rack it up their leyline points. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chipotle ones are going. 
<laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, so, so yeah, it's cool because one, they get hands-on experience on building stuff and executing. They get access to you know highly skilled and experienced mentors and trainers. They get workshops. Uh, some of the students are actually able to get course credits uh, through their college for participating on a project, and they get to build something that's going to save humanity, or you know, we're going to help save humanity. Um, I'm jealous and, at all. Yeah, it, it's it's <laughs> oh, yeah, and this is just our that. pilot program, <laughs> and we are looking for more, you know, because uh, our intent is to build an army, and so we are going to invest in people and empower them and make them awesome. We're going to equip them with skills and knowledge and templates and tools, so even if they don't end up working at Leyline permanently, they can go off as a springboard and you know pursue their career and their dreams. So. I think that's the power of open source and open knowledge is that it is mm -hmm. just free for everybody. Knowledge should be free, just the same way that Wikipedia built, like in aggregate, is like probably the 12th largest website on the planet. Oh, yeah. And it doesn't run by ads. It's all a nonprofit. And it's all about the community collaborating and making the world better for each other. So, you know, that's very inspiring for us. And we want to do the same, which is think about the sum total of positive impact that you have just by sharing knowledge. It's, it's so powerful. And, mm. um, you know, I put it in a context of like, okay, I imagine like a lot of college students now, and it is a crappy scenario. Okay, one, you get out of college, you're racked with student loan debt that'll like live with you for, you know, decades. And then you're in walking into an economy that is completely tanking because like the you know pandemic has destroyed entire industries. And then if you find an opening, you need like three to five years of experience to even get in the door. So like, what the heck are students going to do right now? Um, so to oh, me, yeah, it's like, okay, let's just box. create opportunity. Yeah, I know. exactly, right? Me out right now. I'm not yeah. Lie. So, so <laughs> we want to just create opportunity and, to me, it's like, let's just build an army. We can do some massive stuff with this. And our ability to fundraise and bring in revenue uh, has this crazy potential. And, you know, one of our objectives, is like, we're going to create a ton of jobs and help out a lot mm -hmm. of people. Um, so anyway, there's, there's, you know, again, like, this is a very complex, uh, you know, system, product, and organization. We're doing, like, a lot of crazy stuff. Maybe a lot of it's going to fail, but hell, we got to try something different because the way things work right now, especially in the private sector, is just bonkers. Like, it's not yeah. sustainable. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think so, especially, yeah. too, it's too hard for people to even try to network, especially even today's climate with or without the COVID. Uh, trying to get that experience is almost who you know. But now with like groups like Discord and building communities, you can know a lot more people and not have to have that, you know, I have to live in the city or I have to go to this workshop or this event or, or fair. Um, so it allows kids to, or I assume students to like, and even adults just network and see where they kind of want to put their specialties. Um, Absolutely. You know, we're, we're all in California here locally, but at the same point, like I don't think we ever would have met at, you know, a convention or whatever, but here, here we are mm -hmm. trying to do good. And that's like the best part about it, especially after this year, the year we've all, sat through the dumpster fire of being able to want to still do good <laughs> yeah um is optimistic at the very least to say <laughs> yeah i mean a lot of it is say. like you said networking i mean we met through Haley, <laughs> and right. that's how we made our connection and that yeah. was yeah. from my work in doing esports e stuff and yeah stuff with blizzard and yeah it's just kind of crazy how that yeah that kind of absolutely and and i think that's the cool thing is that we've we've ended up building this community which feels like an extended family and it's it's not just about the pure knowledge but it's also this sense of belonging and you know empathy and care and, and mutual support so you know we're we're trying to create a very powerful culture and the thing about creating a great organizational culture is that as people come into it they start to adhere to those values and mm -hmm. those principles and they start to like transform their perspective on how to get along with people. So the most important thing that organization do is create great, positive, loving cultures because that's what creates the most amazing products and experiences and service is that people that believe in what you're doing and they're surrounded by positivity and energy and creativity. Um, so yeah, we're trying to do all, all the right things. Uh, yeah. At least oh like gosh. from a lot of our learnings <laughs> in the past. 
Uh, and that was a uh, sorry. Sorry to keep going. <laughs> Please stop me if I. <laughs> I was just going to say, case in point, the the all hands meetings. It's we'll, we'll go around and it's like, hey, let's shout out so and so. Let's uh, who who do you want to thank? Who do you want to acknowledge? Who do you want to just say you did a great job? And I want to shout you out. I want to recognize you. And it just is this environment of appreciation and gratitude and you just feel like well i feel supercharged right now so i didn't even know anybody noticed the work i was doing and i i know notice this person i'm gonna make sure i let that person know and, and so i'm telling my wife about it and it's just like this is the coolest place in the world <laughs> I, wish, I wish every every company was like this I mean, yeah yeah, and positivity breeds positivity. Um, and there are actual organiza organizational studies that identified mm -hmm. there's probably like a five or seven to one ratio of positive reinforcement within a team that is correlated to the most productive and insane and innovative teams out there. And what they identified is like, okay, once you start to cross this threshold of negative criticism that's not constructive, it just decimates productivity, effectiveness, happiness, and product quality. So it, it really comes down to invest in people. That is the number one thing, because that's where all your real value comes from is through thinking yeah. and to creativity. So yeah, that's what we're doing here. And you know, for, for those that uh, might not have seen or uh, know my background, uh, I spent the past 10 years at Blizzard Entertainment and I was doing production, building a battle platform, launching a bunch of our games like Hearthstone, Overwatch, uh, Diablo, World of Warcraft, like pretty much all the franchises. Uh, I spent time in Europe, in our European office, um, you know, doing digital marketing, data analysis, data science. Uh, and then I joined our esports team and helped launch uh, Overwatch League, Hearthstone, Heroes of the Storm. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it, I think like the magic at Blizzard was very much culture. Like these are the yeah. most passionate believers. We all lived and breathed our games. And that common bond made us all super supportive of each other and really, you know, treat each other like friends and family. And I think that was a big part of the magic that why we see such amazing quality coming out of blizzard is because there is just awesome awesome culture so, so yeah we want to do that here at leyline and uh ultimately have that spread to our community yeah. <laughs> and spread to the rest of the world you know that's that's kind of the vision or the hey, dream no that's awesome uh but cody with you how was it integrating into the culture of leyline how was that transition for you from your from your background well, you know, it's interesting. Um, working in news and broadcast journalism can be cutthroat. Like people, they don't all, say. everyone thinks <laughs> everyone is out for each other's jobs. And you're writing on a story with somebody and they're just doing nothing but talking shit about everybody <laughs> else. And I'm like, I have this feeling you're oh, not talking about me because I'm right here. But if you're writing with the person that you're talking a whole mess about, you'd be talking about me. Like it's, I don't know. It's just a terrible, terrible vibe. I, I tried my best to not play into it, but sometimes when that is the culture, you're kind of just it, drawn into it. Yeah. You get sucked into it. Now I want to say this though, shout out to my dad. My dad was a uh, manager of a restaurant, not a super big, you know, it was, but it's a uh, probably chili size restaurant. And when he retired, the staff cried. So I, there, there's just a difference between a leader and a boss, right? Mm -hmm. There's the boss that's it's just you know, kind of a mile high above it all, never in the trenches, always just telling you what to do. And then the leader is right there, shoulder to shoulder in the trenches with you doing the job. Like, like, hey, I wouldn't ask you to do something that I wouldn't be willing to do. My dad sometimes would take the grimiest, dirtiest jobs. Like, well, I'm going to clean out this drain that's just full of the grossest stuff. Like, you gag <laughs> just looking at it. And he goes, I wouldn't want to ask anybody else to do this. So he, the manager, yeah. is doing it. I mean, he just was such a leader. And he always, if he had a criticism, he would try to lead. It was like the compliment sandwich. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, let's, let's recognize the strengths. <laughs> yeah. Let, let's talk about where there's some room for improvement and why I believe in you and that you can make that improvement. You know what I mean? It's just, he just had this way about him. And so I grew up working at that, that restaurant. And so 
that feels almost as close to what Leyline's like. So moving, you know, I was, well, I, I could work at the restaurant, but I, I have this more creative, like storytelling spirit. So, okay, dad, I'm going to go do this thing. Oh, I'm in this cutthroat world where everybody's out for each other's jobs and is, holy cow, this is crazy. <laughs> and um, I, I, so to kind of fully flesh out my background, I got a little burnt out working in news and broadcast journalism for a few reasons mm -hmm. that, that, that weird, like everyone out to get you vibe was not terribly fun. It was also really tough to show up on a crime scene and feel more like I'm a leech. No knock to people working in journalism. If you can do it, great. We got to know what's going on. So seriously, yeah. I, I mad props to those who can do it, but I had a hard time turning it off. When I would get home, I would just be depressed or I would just be wound up. Especially after I became a dad, I would go to a scene. I've been to a, a number of different, you know, crime scenes where children died, and mm -hmm. I just felt like I'm on the wrong side of this caution tape. I want to go do mm -hmm. something better, you know, something good. And so uh, I started teaching, and so I'm teaching uh, media arts right to to high schoolers. It's also very tough, and there's so much bureaucratic bull crap it's oh my goodness it's like the thing i love the the actual like interaction with students making a difference in their lives is like 25 percent of the job yeah the rest of the 100%. hours is is just spinning all these plates making everybody happy logging stuff here communicating <laughs> here it's, it's crazy it's a crazy world and so just, i know i know you know his language it's i great. know and i'm sure there's all these teachers out there going like <laughs> preach it brother and so i mean that's where i'm like Okay. Um, Ley line has been a lot of work. I've been uh, putting in some serious hours with it on top of everything else because I am still teaching, but it, it has been a, a, an outlet of so many sources. Like I can, I can do this. I can run, I can, I can be just a lay light, right? I'm just running boink. I'm doing the stuff. I'm, I'm doing the thing, but I can also be a part of helping spread the word, come on a podcast like your guys is, you know, come on here and, <laughs> and, and tell you and your audience a little bit about the cool stuff. And, and, hopefully do something a little more proactive that can inspire others to be a part of this, what can become a global movement of change for good for humanity without any barriers, all of humanity, global community, you know? And so this is where I'm like, this, this is good. I am very glad to be here for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Cody. We're so, wow. we're so lucky to have you. Honestly, you bring a lot of cheer and spirit and uh, vision. So uh, we're very, very blessed to have you, my friend. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> I, I love the way you call it a compliment sandwich because, like, in the management world, we call it the shit sandwich. <laughs> 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 it's like, you know, compliment, uh, compliment, but like, here's a bunch of shit. You gotta yeah. Do it. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, no, I feel you. Like, I do recognize how challenging it is in the education system to just be effective. Uh, and, you know, we're operating in a system that's like 50 years old that was designed for the Industrial Revolution and mm -hmm. not the information age where we are now. And the fact that you can just Google any course that you want. So, you know, I, I really struggle with how do we design redesign this whole thing such that it's really tailored for the kind of world that these kids are going to step into. Um, and I literally, I see my kids like walking into this. Thing. I was like, what the hell are we going to do? <laughs> um, and, uh, but it, it's very interesting. And I study this a lot too. And at least from what I hear and Heather and, and Cody, I'd love to get your input there, which is, it seems like the big areas to focus on is creativity, adaptability, resilience, uh, you know, uh, self-awareness social interactions and team building, those seem like very important skills to focus on versus remote, like our rote memorization and following mm -hmm. procedures and all that stuff. Uh, so I want to get your thoughts. Like, um, you know, what's your assessment? And I always talk about the four C's. I, I, I had heard a couple years ago about some study. Boy, I can't quote it. Just take my semi word for it. <laughs> that there was a study. You can Google it. Uh, yeah, go Google it. <laughs> that uh, employers across the board. I mean, if you're talking about employers at Starbucks, Best Buy, tech developers, I mean, it's just employers across the board. And they, they, they boiled it down to the top 10 list of items they would like a new hire to be to have what qualities a new hire to have and the top four i remember because they all start with c so that helped and it was creativity 
collaboration, communication, and critical thinking. So a lot to your point, Jeremy, those, those top four, could I help my students develop those aspects? And so in a, in a world where uh, even pre-COVID, there is a lot of stifling in schools of kids who want to be creative, right? A lot of times they were the troublemakers, the, the class clowns, and bring them. I will work with them. I want to, I, you know, I mean, they're, they're clay, you know, but they have yeah. all this creative juices and it's like, okay, let's, let's channel that. Let's do something with it. That's, that could be more productive and, and yet still rewarding. And you feel this outlet of, of all this energy and this, this creativity and all this stuff going on. Um, and also where we are so distanced from each other, the ability to communicate and to collaborate so, I mean, yeah, you know, some of my students are, you know, having anxiety attacks over the idea of a phone call, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, it's that just talking to people is terrifying. So, I mean, that uh, there's no, like, here's my curriculum on how to get good at talking to people. <laughs> there, it, 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 one size does not fit all. Mm -mm. It doesn't. Yeah. And so I feel like it's. Okay, so the Industrial Revolution did make a huge switch in education, but what predated that? It was the master-apprentice type of relationship. And I think something a little more akin to that is actually what we really need to have a little, you know, I mean, not these classes of 30, 40 kids every hour, you know, a new group of 30, 40 kids. You'll, you'll get yeah. to know one or two at best. You know what I mean? It's it, getting to know a smaller group or, you know, as close to one-on-one -on -one and really, okay, what is it interested? What are you interested in? What can we do that uh, can kind of harness your talents, cultivate those and push you forward, and, push you forward yeah. and in a way that will help you build those four C's, you know, and, mm -hmm. and become just more marketable to all sorts of different types of employers. Those and, and are some of my thoughts. <laughs> yeah. No, that was, I, I actually, I'm going to clip that four season. <laughs> that, yeah, that was good. That was really good. But that whole laundry list you gave Jeremy about like, being resilient and adapting and all that stuff. That's all the stuff I wanted for my students. When COVID hit and we had to do remote learning, um, I had a lot of friends and cousins like reach out like my kid, you know, I taught TK and the, my kindergartner isn't getting the same thing. I'm like, kids are resilient. They're going to learn this skill of having to be resilient and doing conferences with parents even. They were more stressed, like, my kid can't figure out the tech. I'm like, they will. And they're going to adapt to the new school because that's all they have to do or they can do. Is it easy? No. But part of that is a skill set. So when, you know, 20, 21, 22 happens and we're in the classroom, they will have that box checked off. Figured out remote learning along with the teachers. Same with the teachers, too. This is on our resume of having to do remote learning for the better and negative of it. Um, and then I remember to kind of go on, like, really good advice uh, from a smart person. Uh, Jamie and I had a, a pizza luncheon back in college and with our, our uh, CSU president of our college. And I remember someone asked him like, what's one piece of advice you would give to every graduating class or this graduating class? And he said, always be willing to learn. No matter what you do in life, no matter how many years you put into it, always learn and don't be too snobbish that you know everything. Hmm. And it's like, if 2020 isn't that, I don't know what is. Um, because we always had to learn something new. And that's kind of the cool thing with Leyline is that you actually have this community as like a business end of like, because I took some like master's courses of leadership and everything and all this like positive environment and community building absolutely is critical. Uh, Leyline has that support on top of this amazing foundation of the doing good aspect. And I think that's what really draws a lot of us in because we've heard multiple people on like, on the discord group or on twitter or on a lot of your interviews and panels that you guys have had your podcast even um talking about wanting to do good with our everyday life that you know we're busy paying our bills we're busy doing our jobs but when i go to bed at night my computer is on in a sleep mode it can do something good and i get a gift card like what's there to lose <laughs> exactly <laughs> right? totally. win 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 yeah <laughs> yeah and, and, you know, I think you're so right is that, you know, there there's something about the tech space as well, which is like, hey, build this like product and optimize it, and AI and analytics, et cetera. But the most important part is the, the part is the community. Like, what is mm -hmm. the dynamic with people and your product? Um, and that was the thing I saw in a tech sector that really frightened me is that the business model is essentially addict people to your product, 
steal all their data, sell it, and then blast them with ads. Like that is literally what 90% awesome. of the tech sector is all about. If you're just and now tuning in, that is not what Leyline does. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So Please don't like, log in and go, yeah. what? So, so to Opposite. me, if you want to like stop this destructive business yeah. model, you got to kneecap it there. And you got to cut out advertising as like the core way to drive revenue and then build mm. real value into your product that the users can have uh, equal share over. And, and that to me is like the revolution with blockchain and crypto is that it democratizes a lot of this and decentralizes that power to the people versus these like gigantic tech firms, which is like literally 10 firms really run the entire planet. It's like very scary right now. Um, so yeah, that, that's the kind of stuff that we want to really revolutionize. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not just us, honestly, it's like a gigantic transformation taking place in the tech sector. Uh, we're just kind of leveraging that and then trying to, you know, attach it to some good <laughs> versus just like, Hey, I'm going to make a billion dollars on Bitcoin and Ethereum. You know, like, <laughs> okay, fine. You get a lot of money yeah. out of it, but what are you going to do with it? That's the real question. Where does value go and how is value utilized to actually improve the state of the world? And so I just keep seeing like, man, there's this massive gap between all the value being accrued by tech and what impact it's having on a planet. And to me, it's like, can you imagine the fact that we have $20 trillion circulating in GDP every year and we still have people starving and like yeah, trying to like walk insane. miles to get water? It's like, this is, this is bananas. Like we're a global species. Let's help, it, help each other out. And literally you could just shave off 1% of that and cure all poverty <laughs> like that's it like just so simple um and what i realized is that actually it comes down to system design it's not about a matter matter of altruism and empathy because we all have the capacity for that um or rather 99 percent of us have the capacity for empathy and love and care and there's the one percent is kind of like sociopaths which is genetic um and to me it's like okay just rewire the system like change the game of life such that it's actually bountiful for everybody. So we are at this threshold in like our generation and in society where we can make that change. We just need to be brave. We need to be brave and work our asses off and come together to make it happen. Um, so, you know, for me, like I just wanted this to happen and I'm really lazy. Like, I, honestly, I don't want to work this freaking hard. Like I was just hoping somebody <laughs> yeah. else would invent it for us. Uh, but then, you know, it's like, it's just kind of too late. So I was like, all right, fine, let's just do this thing. Um, it's possible. And uh, so, yeah, here here we are uh, trying to make it happen. And it's uh, starting to work. It's just beginning, but it's starting to work. So, voila. So, okay, last time we chatted, it was before a holiday break. And you guys had just did the GoFundMe. Mm -hmm. What has majorly happened besides being continually awesome oh. with Leyline uh yeah. since we last saw you in like mid to early December. Uh well yeah a lot actually and it's not all awesome. <laughs> so you know part of the educational experience like as you're a startup you're going to fail all the time. And we failed, we continue to fail all the time, but that is okay and it's part of our culture because failure is the best teacher. Uh so we have learned a lot since we last spoke. Um, so it, uh, it's funny, our original hypothesis is like, all right, cool, we got this amazing mission, we got this great vision, we need to get funded. So let's just like, instead of going to, you know, a bunch of like, you know, venture capital billionaires, let's like have the people fund us and like crowdfund it. So that was the focus on a GoFundMe campaign. And we went all in. But what we learned is that, oh, man, people need to like, understand us and to know us and to try the product and like to build this trust. And then they're going to start to donate. So we ended up like, you know, we raised a good amount of money with like our, our main network. And so we're still floating just fine, but we have way more ambitious goals. So what we're now pivoting to is like, okay, let's look, I talk to people that are big in investment and social impact and angel investors that see the opportunity and want to help this thing, you know, become reality. So we now like done a bunch of due diligence and like our packaging and saying like, hey, this is the entire business model. This is a proposition. Here's a pitch deck, et cetera. So we are aiming to continue to raise that money uh, while at the same time just building as great a product as possible and then investing in people and building a community around it. Yeah, the so more I'm of us that are doing it 
the more we find out this could be tweaked, this could be tweaked. And so there's just constant, I've been trying to make a how-to video. <laughs> I, I, I think I've got like my fifth or sixth cut. And by the, then I'm like sending off, hey, Brian, what do we need to change? Well, I think we're about to change this thing already. And so now parts of it are, are out of date. Yeah. And so oh, no. I, thought, I thought it was ready to ship. <laughs> and now we, because for the longest time, we had the ability to click a daily uh, exercise, but now the daily activities button that's in my video is outdated because now we added mm -hmm. sleep to it. Did you exercise? Did you get a good night's sleep? We might even be adding nutrition and a good mood, uh, uh, good and mindful diet. Uh, mindful. Yeah. I mean, gosh, yeah. the list is good. It, so it's evolving so much that I have not been able to lock in a hey, here, here grandma or somebody who may be a little less tech savvy, here's a, a step-by-step -step visual and audible guide on how to do it because it keeps evolving and growing and we keep adapting and fixing things. Uh, mm -hmm. The more alpha testers we have, the more people are doing it. It's like, do it, break it, right? Try Figure out yeah. what's wrong with it so we can fix it. And it's been going really well, I have to mm -hmm. say. I feel like the yeah. it, user experience has been uh, continuously just getting better and better. Yeah. And yeah. so, yeah, it's, it's at a point where, we're, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, I've actually talked, I don't know if it was one of your QA engineers or someone, because um, I was having some trouble with logging in. Um, and so it was kind of interesting to test with them kind of what was working, what wasn't working. Um, we got it all worked out but it was yeah cool it's, it's it a evolves. constant yeah. learning experience oh, yeah. and uh so you know like the uh the methodology we're practicing is actually agile um mm -hmm. so we're specifically uh scrum where you have your standard scenarios and your sprints but we just ship product every single day bug fixes nice. new features and it's just a, like um, in the startup stage, it's actually there's this mission to get product market fit. It's like a common, you know, um, concept, which is you're going to go out to market and you're going to have an idea of like, okay, this is my product. This is how it's going to work. But when you like introduce it to actual users, they're going to be like, what the hell is this thing? Like, <laughs> this doesn't make sense or whatever. This is unclear. So a lot of it really comes down to just constant listening and feedback and experimenting and measuring. It's really just using science, right? You form your hypothesis, you run your experiment, you collect your data, you analyze, you yeah. come to a conclusion, and you start again. So we literally do that like dozens of times every single day. And we look at the data, we get the qualitative feedback from our users in Discord, and we just iterate and we just fix shit. So it, it's really fascinating because in the past like you know month and a half, our original vision of this has evolved so much. And, you know, uh, that's why if you go to our GoFundMe page, it's already very different because we were like, you know, let's uh, use computing power to save the world. And now it's grown into like, wow, computing power is just one element out of a hundred mm -hmm. of things that you can do. And we should just pay you for all of that, you know, for just being awesome. And let's make okay. it freaking a celebration. And so your awesome avatar and profile of all these things that you've done to help people and help the planet so yeah it's really evolving and it's actually quite a different product uh since we last spoke yeah, yeah definitely evolution yeah. is important though i i want to ask just because i'm curious because it's i've done agile and sprints and stuff like that before are you running just daily sprints or are you having more long-term like week mm. or two week sprints as well alongside the daily sprints yeah, so action uh, as an organization, what we're uh, implementing is what we call a rhythm of business. So each of the different teams that we have, we call them pods, can scale infinitely. But all of them, you know, follow the same rhythm, which is, okay, one week is a sprint. We have Monday, let's uh, get together, plan out exactly what we're going to commit to, what we believe we can execute, and form our hypothesis. Every single day, we have our stand-ups and daily check-in to say, okay, how are things going? What's the progress? What did we learn? What's our blockers? And then Friday is let's do a review of all the stuff that we committed to. Did we accomplish it? What did we learn? What are the adjustments you need to make? And that's at the product level. And then on the other side is the team level. So let's do a retrospective, understand how do we work together? How do we communicate? What's our process? What are our big blockers? Um, and then let's just fix that. So it's like every single week, it's always um, build, test, analyze, reflect, and learn and evolve in the next week. So mm -hmm. that's kind of like a constant rhythm all the time. And that allows us to move very fast and respond very quickly too. So that's yeah. the key. 
is in the tech world, like things move freaking fast, like really oh, yeah. fast. Um, so, you know, like, you know, if I were to do a comparison of like, you know, a large corporation like Blizzard, it's like, you got to go through seven layers of red tape and bureaucracy and approvals and like, you know, get 30 people to like give feedback and you have to collect it and organize it. Here, we're just like, go, ship yeah. it, experiment, measure, change. <laughs> it's just like, go, 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 go. So, um, I- I have a question then. Uh, as you grow uh, as a company, do you think you'll have to move away from Scrum as it gets bigger and more unwieldy? Um, actually, you know, the the philosophy is that we actually want to create as much autonomy as possible for every single team. And the way you can do that is actually you just create different pipelines. So as we're building our product, you know, you could start to separate product lines across, hey, here's like account management, account creation, here's the marketplace and trading, here's your profile, here's your leaderboards. And so you could just set up independent autonomous teams to build out specific product lines. And by doing that, they have the freedom to say, okay, this is our team, this is our skill sets, our strengths and weaknesses, let's tailor how we work together. And as long as we're producing the right outputs and that's consistent across pods, then you could scale infinitely. And that's the plan. It's like when we have like 300, 400 student ambassadors just building crazy amounts of stuff, we could do it all in mm-hmm. parallel. And the speed of product deployment goes exponential. So that's like we we have built the organization to scale. And a lot of it's learning from like, how do we do it at Blizzard? It's like we're a global company. We operate in this way. We have footprints all over the planet. How do you scale an organization? So we learned a lot from that. We built it and even evolved that model so we could plug in hundreds of people very, very easily. Uh, so yeah, that, we're poised for some really cool stuff. That's awesome. <laughs> um, for for those who might be a little confused as what like Scrum and Agile is, we don't have enough time to really break down what exactly it is. Um, but how I learned it was my, my previous job, but also this book, The Art of Doing Twice the Work in Half the Time. Uh, by Jeff Sutherland. Pretty if you bad. want to check that out, that's a good kind of primer on how Scrum works. If that's something that you're interested, in. I don't know, Jeremy, if you have <laughs> yeah, any, bo- totally. any books on Scrum that you would recommend. <laughs> yeah, or- I oh. mean, I- I'll- I'm going to say this honestly: like YouTube has got everything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just like look, true. Like, you do like Scrum in seven minutes, and like you kind of get the concept. And and I think that's the beauty of it is that's a very lean methodology. You don't need to like mm-hmm. take an entire course around it. You could learn oh, everything yeah. you need to learn in like a week's training. Um, and it's just more practicing it than anything else. Um, but uh, yeah, Agile to me is kind of like the de facto approach when you're doing software development because mm-hmm. it just needs that speed and analysis. Um, but there's even more like, you know, aggressive methodologies as well. Uh, and Google, in fact, just throws out all process and just like build, build, build. Um, <laughs> that makes me think yeah, of, of Valve it. too. It's kind of just free form almost. Um, oh yeah. But, th- but that reminded me though that um, one of the bigger companies that does use the Scrum Agile model, uh, model is Spotify, and they have videos online if you kind of want to see how they um, do it. So if this is another mm-hmm. thing you want to learn, like Jeremy said, YouTube, you can find anything. You learn <laughs> yeah, it's true. And you know what? We will run workshops on ley lines. So if anyone's interested in developing these skills and getting an understanding of the methodology, but even the experience and the philosophy behind it, absolutely, we welcome anybody to you know just pop in and say, "Hey, I want to learn." It's like, all right, cool. Here's all of the experienced people that I'll teach you. Um, and like, here's a potential project you want to work on and like, you know, just hang out in our Slack channel and join all of our meetings as a lurker. Totally cool. Like we do not want to hide anything. Um, you know, obvious except like PII and, you know, our private information. Yeah. Crazy Mm -hmm. shit like that. So yeah, anybody interested, we're happy to have you. Sorry. You mean I don't have your mailing address saved? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's great. (laughs) But yeah, check out our Discord where I have my driver's license like posted right <laughs> in the <laughs> are, you, are you like that guy Lifelock that has his social security number on the side of the car? <laughs> <laughs> Bad <laughs> idea. Yeah, not a good <laughs> idea. Um, well, I think what's really exciting too is even on your YouTube channel, we see Cody's lovely uh, smoldering face up there all the time. <laughs> but you also have every all hands meeting on your YouTube channel saved. So if you want to watch it, you can definitely see that like, it's kind of fun to like go back and like what's changed from week to week. And you guys yeah. kind of discuss it there. 
it, it is uh, actually really interesting uh, because there's a lot of just like very uh, deep stuff in there. Uh, and it gets like more hardcore week after week. Uh, and, you know, my, my hope with that was, you know, a couple of things, like definitely we want to be able to be held accountable, but also like, you know, just be as authentic as possible. Like to me, that is the new way to establish a brand is just be yourself. Like you don't need to like manipulate people or create these like weird, um, you know, uh, Personas. representations of who you are. Yeah. Just be you and just share that. And if people are not going to care, like fine, whatever. That's just who we are. And, you know, hopefully uh, people can learn from our mistakes because, man, I fail all the time. <laughs> and I'm just like up there. So like, all right, here's where I screwed up. Um, and, you know, being able to create a culture where that is celebrated and accepted and, you know, supported is really powerful because then it opens up this huge space to learn and be better. And so my hope is that other people can learn from our failures and mistakes and then, you know, make their lives easier. So anyway, crossing fingers, that actually works. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. It's, it's a grand experiment, I think. Yeah. And I'm sure it's going to get me in trouble at some point. I'll probably say something really stupid at some point. <laughs> and, uh, we uh, we, all, good we stuff all do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay. I have all my notes here. I want to ask before I forget. I don't know how to transition to it because I don't know what it is. The non-refundable gamer tokens or blockchains? Ah, non-refundable. Uh, yeah. What are those? How do we? I don't even know how to transition. NTRs. Yeah. So. NFTs. Uh, non-refundable <laughs> tokens. All right. So yeah, this may get very heavy, but like you know, dipping into the blockchain space is actually quite important. I think for to understand where technology is going to go in the next five years and sooner. Uh, so there's the idea of blockchain itself, which is a new protocol, which is basically the, the safest, uh, most advanced encryption known to humanity. And what happens is like with this super secure encryption, you can own digital assets like nobody can copy it. Nobody can hack it. And if you think about it, like, you know, the industry that got most disrupted by the Internet was like the music industry. Because you just have a song and people can just copy it a billion times and you have no mm -hmm. control over it. Where with blockchain, you could actually own your asset. And so say that you have a song and you want people to listen to a song, you can build it on the blockchain and have it such that people that listen to your song actually pay you like a fraction of a penny. Instead of having to go through YouTube and as an intermediary blast you with ads oh. and you get like nothing out of it. Um, and that's the idea with non-fungible tokens is that these are unique items that are specific to your game or platform that you actually own. So imagine, you know, uh, you know, epic uh, legendary sword in Warcraft. These yeah. things sell for what, you know, hundreds of dollars on eBay. But mm. if Blizzard says, hey, you know, you don't get to do that or we're going to shut down, you lose that. You don't really own it. You're just renting mm. it from Blizzard. So blockchain and non-fungible tokens means that you own that. Even if Leyline disappears off the face of the planet, you still have that token. And you can trade it, you can sell it, you can do whatever you want with it. It is not controlled by anybody but you. And that is really powerful because now imagine you've got this one unique item that is like super, you know, rare, has crazy utility and has like the most amazing art asset possible. That is owned by you. And imagine owning the Mona Lisa. That is mm -hmm. like what it is in a digital space. So we are going to create that for all the people on Leyline, and you wow. are going to own that shit. So <laughs> here's the here's the magic, or here's the secret sauce: is that uh, as you redeem your rewards on Leyline for your Leyline points, not only do you get that gift card, like a Bitcoin gift card, we're going to plug that code, key code into the digital asset. And that asset is going to be your avatar, your skins, your pets, your backgrounds, your banners, all these like badass, amazing pieces of art and part of your profile that is on the Leyline platform. We've and been teasing can... some of those. I just want to notice oh, you guys have been on a lot of our social media, I think. And so you've probably mm -hmm. seen some of the polls that we've done, like the donkey stick versus yeah. the... I, I call it the Fabio horse because it looks like a horse with a <laughs> yeah blowing totally. me. And it's, that's been kind of a fun way for us to sort of start teasing out some of the artwork that will okay, be I was NFTs. Wondering what those were. 
Yeah. Like, Why is so, there a pogo stick with a donkey head on it? Yes. I don't understand. Because you will own that. And that'll be like on your avatar where you can like be holding the donkey stick of. <laughs> oh and we'll put in like random stats there to say, like, all right, here's how much your luck is, how much your strength is, et cetera. And it'll impact your experience on Leyline. And here's the other cool thing. So these non fungible tokens are compatible across the entire blockchain. So we are now actually building partnerships with other blockchain game developers where their items are uh, compatible on our platform and vice versa. So you now kind of live in this metaverse. Like imagine Ready Player One where your yes. stuff in oh. one game and one world is totally compatible everywhere else. Leyline is, is the now. oasis, people. <laughs> 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 yeah, man. We actually do good. <laughs> Exactly. Yes. So we are helping to build that metaverse. And, you know, it's it's the entire like blockchain world that's building this yeah. and like starting to connect together. And our position is, you know what, we're going to bring in this economy of doing good and build a tether to the real world. And, you know, because here's a challenge, right? We are could all just get disappeared into the virtual world and completely mm -hmm. disconnect from reality because reality sucks right now. And that's a problem because if we are disconnected yep. <laughs> forever, we don't have empathy for these problems and a will to fix that. Mm -hmm. So we need a tether back to the real world. And the best way to tether and motivate people to get involved in the real world is pay them. So we're going to pay people to get off their ass, to exercise, to do some kind of volunteering. And then you get the perks of all the virtual stuff on top of that. So... Anyway, that's kind of sorry. I went on a big tangent, but that's kind of the. No, beauty I think. Of I think one thing to note is that an NFT, because of its its exclusive and its rarity or potential rarity, right? You own it, and maybe there's only a thousand of them, or even less. Mm. That can increase value. So, hey, cool! You just you earn this gift card, and hey, luck of the draw, you got that Fabio horse. Maybe I don't quote me on this, but maybe there's only 10 of those. <laughs> I, I don't know how many of those we will put out there, but say only 10 and you buy that blockchain. You only have, you have one of those and you could, Hey, do you want one of these? Yeah. I'll, I'll pay a thousand bucks for it. You'll pay a thousand. I'll pay 10,000. Right. <laughs> it's kind of the similar concept is how those crypto yeah. kitties made like 12 and a half yeah. million in a short period of time. So yeah, exactly. And, yeah. and this is the, this is the, how crazy this space is. So in 2018 um, or 2017, the most expensive crypto kitty, which is literally just like this, like digital kitty, like an image yeah. uh, sold for $170,000, $170,000. And just recently in the metaverse, there were two planets that sold for a million dollars each. This is the insanity that is in this space. And the way I see it, it's like, holy shit, that's a lot of money. What if we just like it? orient it towards yeah. good? You know, like let's go exactly. solve a bunch of poverty um, by doing that. Um, so yeah, we want to make the most badass items possible on Leyline. And we've got, you know, the network of artists that are like, you know, blizzard quality art. And so we're going to do some really cool stuff. And, you know, the early adopters here are going to be really big beneficiaries because you're going to, in our alpha test, our testers are going to be able to keep these non-fungible tokens. And these are going to be nice. ultra, ultra rare. Like you can only imagine what two years from now is going to be like when mm -hmm. you have the first ley line item. That's going to mm -hmm. be sick. Like the Fabio horse. Um, the Fabio exactly. Fabio, Fabio horse head. Oh my gosh. And you know, yeah, I'm not going to promise a specific dollar value, but <laughs> right. the potential here is just bananas. Uh, so yeah. Crazy. Yeah. And you know, N -A -N -A -S. Okay. sorry. I was just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That and you know, done. that, that was my, my realization was like, okay, I see this happening. I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm very heavy into tech. I see the innovation. I know where all the startups are doing. And I got it. It's like, okay, there are going to be a, a lot of new billionaires coming out of this thing. And yeah. my take was, man, we don't need any more like sociopathic billionaires anymore. We need to like take all this <laughs> money and like redistribute it, you know, more equitably yeah. across the planet. That's the key. So I saw yeah. that as an imperative, which is like, honestly, we just don't need any more Mark Zuckerbergs in the world. Like we just need to break that shit. Well, especially like with the idea of like people die like a lot of people were asking especially like on news stations and media sources like what's bitcoin how does it work let's invest in it and and it's like that's a complicated spiraling of yeah. tech to it dive is. into 
Yeah. But I like with Leyline is that it's trying to like bring that deep, deep internet stuff, like the crypto kitties and stuff like that, into like an obtainable platform. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's because like I had no idea crypto like I love I love me some cats, but like I had no idea what that was. <laughs> They're like yeah. digital beanie babies. Yeah, yeah or actually, neopets. Yeah. It's basically yeah. neopets, yeah. Right. On, on yeah, like, I was thinking total neopets. Yeah. I forgot my password <laughs> in that account. I'm so sad about it. <laughs> um but yeah, that's like the really cool thing with Leyline. And that's where like it blows my mind as a nerd and as like a regular person to think about how far Leyline's going and trying to go. And as I, as you said too, it's changed a lot and I can definitely see where it's still going. Do you guys have any like, I don't want to say like an ETA, but like a, a how's mm. that plan or map of timeline yeah. for you guys going right now? Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, you know, right now we are in a closed alpha. We've got about 1300 users now at this point and just over 330 active community in our Discord. So it's growing Congrats. significantly. Yeah, thank you. Um, and so far, we've already um, contributed 10,000 days worth of computing power to accelerate science. It, that is insane, the amount that we've already contributed. And this is a very small user base. Um, so our focus is we want to really polish up that core loop, that whole user experience of you know, sign up, Start doing good things, rack up your points, get your rewards, and just making sure that's all good to go. And then we'll move into our closed beta. So closed beta, we have like I think about a thousand people on our wait list right now. Uh, so we're gonna start to like you know add people in gradually over time. And so again, you guys get some early access and direct access. You get to skip thousand uh, thousand person wait list. <laughs> um, and so we really just want to continue to onboard more and more features as well as more and more partners. So both yeah. game sponsors and brand sponsors, but also nonprofit orgs. Yeah, so that you've got seriously. a wide. Yep. And so you have get, a wide get the range. Red Cross in there, get Goodwill, get so many different people. And then you're out there. It's like, I donated Goodwill. You get your little receipt, maybe scan it. I, this is my pitch. Scan it with a ley line app, 10 yeah. points, right? Or whatever we want to decide. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. Home organizers in there and like have them do their like, house purges. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we could do receipt. so much, so much. Um, and, you know, in fact, you know, uh, Heather, you'll probably be happy about this, but we will be able to start rewarding people for educational content. So let's say a student like, you know, takes an online course, finishes a quiz, boom, we'll just give you leyline points. Like, good job on you for learning and being smarter. Uh, so we've got some cool partnerships already in that direction. So we're going to be able to move pretty quickly on it. And um, I remember we talked about this because we I, I do elementary. So like I have fifth graders that I know loved and obsessed with freerice.com, which is a charitable website. Yes. And they were all for helping for hunger, but they're under 18. But those college mm. kids for sure. Um, and, and they're, I, oh my God, my students are now adults. And like, I see them in the real world sometimes at like jobs and stuff like that. And they say hi to me. But the fact that, yeah, they've wanted to be philanthropic is the word I think. Mm-hmm. for so mm-hmm. long and this makes it obtainable because lord knows they all have a phone or they have a computer somewhere mm-hmm. that is doable and that's i think the most exciting thing to share um is that this is something that anyone can do um, that's absolutely right um and yeah and, and it's you know it's like to me that's like that just doesn't exist today there is no resume yeah. there's no like linkedin for the good you do in the world and that is so Maybe powerful Facebook. for students yeah I mean, yeah and even that it's like you know kind of rough like it's not really designed yeah. for it uh <laughs> oh, because man. like you know what happens is there's no validation from a nonprofit. it's all self-reported like even on linkedin mm-hmm. you can just make up whatever crap you want but our system is really tied to these nonprofits and orgs to say, okay, please validate a real world activity and then we will make the rewards in place. So that's, that's the key is like these partnerships. Um, but in terms of timing, so Q1, Q2 of 2021 is really going to be getting us into closed beta. And around June, July is where you start to say, okay, open beta, open the floodgates. And we'll probably do market by market. So right now we're focusing on North America. We're going to very quickly go into Latin America because, uh, holy crap, it's like 50% of our traffic already. And we did zero localization, zero marketing yeah. there. So they see it. They're just like, we want this like really bad. Latin America is a great market. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I've got all the connections there from my Blizzard Latam days. So it's uh, we've, we've, we're poised for explosion over there. Um, so really, the second half of 2021 is really where we want to just 
go huge after we've got a mature product ready to go. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the roadmap for us. And uh, we want to move fast because, you know, when you put things into perspective, you know, most companies kind of think about their timeline and like what they need to build. From my point of view, we need to think about the humanities timeline and we do not have a lot of time. So we are just pushing super fast and super hard because we need to make a difference. Um, and everybody needs to do that, in my opinion. Um, so we're going to just do the hard work and make it easy for everybody else. So <laughs> that's, that to we me is the mission. It. Yeah, we got we to move <laughs> fast. Um, and uh, I think we could, we could do great things. And I do mm -hmm. think that we can really right the ship. We can win back our future and win back our planet. Um, I think a lot of us might be in despair about that, and particularly the younger generations, I can feel it. Yeah. But yeah. screw that. You know what? We're not going to give up. We're not going to quit. We can fix these problems. Like, I believe in that, and I'm seeing it happen. So, you know, come join us. Let's do this thing. We, we got this. <laughs> How do we Absolutely. top that? Right. That was perfect. <laughs> yeah, <why laughs> yeah, sorry. He man. keeps saying he needs other people to do this. I'm like, but you're just so good at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I get it. I'm super grateful for you guys for being such early supporters. Um, it, yeah, I think this is actually the most critical time where we have people that really believe in this because without that, we will go nowhere. Like, I think that's really mm -hmm. key. Um, and it's, it's really happening and in, you know, you guys have played a really big part in it and you're just, we're just beginning. So, you know, really appreciate that. No, yeah. it's super, super cool. Oh, Jimmy, God. No, it just has been really <laughs> cool that you guys reached out to us and wanted to be on the show and talk about your vision and this kind of crazy mission, but totally <laughs> awesome at the same time. I love it. What I really like is that even Cody, you made the joke, like it's like the Oasis, but that's like a reference that a lot of people could get. It's, it's allowing the internet world to kind of overlap with the real world. And with the all young people, like that, that makes sense to them. Um, and I think with the, a lot of the young people, the young people, um, <laughs> youth today, they, uh, they, that's all the reality is, is the internet world kind of mm -hmm. in the real, real world. And, and so that's kind of the, the exciting part is that with, Leyline, it's gonna progress because the demographic is progressing. Uh, the, the boomers and so forth eventually will be retiring, and you know that's not the market you're going for. You're going for the gamers. You're going for the streamers. You're going for Latin America, who's apparently gonna be rocking it once they get in. Um, and that's exciting to hear. And so yeah, thank you for like including us in this little bubble right now because I'm so excited to see it explode. Like this is gonna be so cool. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I'm going to go a little bit of a tangent, though, but you're talking about Latin America, and I think people totally undervalue that market. Oh, yeah. um, but just, like, two weeks ago, I, f I, I really forget the guy's name, Greg F., I think. Um, he had a Fortnite skin come out. He had, like, 2.4 million people watching him on, on Twitch, like, breaking all these records and stuff. So, I mean, that is a, a market that is just waiting to be tapped. I totally agree. I totally agree. Um, and, uh, you know, it's interesting, actually, there's a fantastic article by Polygon, where they just started dig into Venezuela. And, you know, in, in case the uh, folks aren't familiar, it is a nightmare over there with authoritarianism, yeah. hyperinflation, people like have like very little to even survive. And it's actually, a lot of players and citizens are surviving by playing RuneScape. They are just literally farming and just selling items and they are just wow. making a living by doing that. And it was beautiful in that like, holy crap, this can happen. People can save it. And then my take was like, we could just up this by two orders of magnitude. Let's just do it. Because <laughs> right. like, I mean, come on, like RuneScape is cool, but man, we could do way better than RuneScape. <laughs> are there any NFTs in RuneScape? <laughs> Zero. Uh -huh. So, so yeah, that to me is like, it was an inspiration to know that, hey, this exists. Like this is a solution that people are already using and we don't have to like re we don't have to like reinvent or create some kind of new paradigm. Let's no. just use that as a model and then put an even better experience on top of that and just give it to the people so that yeah, we can do this. Like it's, it's already there. We just have to take the idea and, you know, level it up a bit. Uh, so it's very exciting. <laughs> 
We're going to help out Latam as, as quickly as we can. No, it's awesome. I can just see when, when there's like people are recycling, say, you know, old Samsung or Android tablets or something like that. It's like, what, what if we, what if we gave those to folks in, in more third world area, you know, the very impoverished areas. It's like, what is it to them? It's, it, this is yeah. a great use of recycling and now they can run Boink on it. And, and here we go, accrue some ley line points. Right, right in their 100%, community, you know, hundred percent. And yeah, uh, here's like awesome promotional like plans for us, which is okay, fine. If uh, you're gonna check in every day to exercise, you get ten ley line points. Uh, we will implement it such that if you hook up a device like a Fitbit or an Apple Watch or whatever health kit, uh, we'll double your points and then do it for every hour you committed to because it's real validated data. So for us, like we're gonna say, okay, hey Google. We've got 100,000 users in Latin America mm -hmm. that are like exercising every day. Why don't you just donate a bunch of Fitbits to us? We're going to give it to them. Uh, or ideally, let's just get a bunch of phones that are cheap and just get it out there. People will get hooked up to Leyline and make like $25 in Bitcoin and save their life. You know, like <laughs> yeah. we, could, we could do this so easily. It's like ridiculous. Um, so that's like the amazing potential that we have that we can execute very, very fast. And I bet Heather and I really know, you know, like the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? We get, yeah. I'm sure you got students too that come in and if you're hungry or you're not sure cool where you're, matter. oh no, yeah. education, making self-actualization type of decisions, that's a pipe dream. Mm -hmm. I need to eat. I need to feel yeah. safe. I need to feel secure. And so being able to like insert some better income into a community where, okay, now, now that, that scarcity is disappearing, I can move up on my hierarchy of needs and start focusing more on education and making better decisions for myself, for my family, for my community, for my world. I mean, this, mm. this just ripples and it absolutely yeah. ripples. And, and, and like, I, I mean, sometimes I'm just like, let's punch poverty in the face, <laughs> right? Yeah. That's, Seriously. that's the big villain. Let's destroy it. And, just don't and break your screen. That's all. That's all. It's <laughs> yeah, that's don't right. break your screen. Yeah, that's a good case. <laughs> yes. But, uh, um, you know, there's yeah. really powerful stuff there too, Cody. You're 100 percent correct. And here, here's an easy analogy. Uh, let's say that we're driving on a highway together on a 405, and your gas tank is like dead empty. And I start talking to you about like, hey, you know what? Let's solve climate change. You're gonna be like, screw you! I gotta fight a gas station right now. Like, I don't want to talk about anything else. Like, that's exactly. an anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> that is exactly how everybody in scarcity feels yes. because they're just like, you know, I gotta put a roof over my head and food on the table. And if you want to lift up people out of that, you just gotta give them a foundation that they feel safe and they can start thinking about themselves and then others. Um, and there are actually studies here that um, they start to understand, okay, if you can't pay your bills month to month, what does it do to your cognitive uh, you know, capacity? And what they found is that if you live in scarcity and can't pay bills month to month, your functional IQ decreases by 13 points. That is mm -hmm. crazy. And so now imagine the billion people on a planet live in extreme scarcity now and you elevate them and now there's some aggregate of humanity's intelligence is increased by 13 iq points yeah. holy crap what could we do mm -hmm. on this planet it's incredible so there is a very very powerful self-interest related to solving poverty because it's just going to make the world way better um and then on top of that so that think about the economic value so let's say we lift mm -hmm. a billion people out of poverty. They now have expendable income to invest in things. So let's say we have global challenges like cancer, for example. And let's say that, you know, maybe 3 billion people on the planet uh, can afford cancer treatments. And, you know, that makes the market factor, the economic forces to say, we're going to innovate here because now we have a billion more people that can pay for cancer treatments. That yeah. business is going to just skyrocket. And then we see innovation come as a result. So there are so many powerful things that we get as a species by eradicating poverty. It's not this disconnect of like, okay, we help somebody far away and their life is better. It's all of our aggregate lives together get better. So that's the, you know, that's the hidden benefit, I think, uh, that often we don't really make that connection, um, uh, but it's well, important it's too to, to, to think. think about. You know, yes. you're so it's it's not a bad thing that we're all hyper focused in our bubble because it's our <laughs> bubble. Like that's that's where we wake up and go to bed every night. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, as a teacher, especially like seeing the students and 
being empathetic to everyone else. I think we've all felt that more the past year or so. Um, and that's where it's like 2021. It's like, it, it has to get better. And it's like with stuff like this and a lot of other things happening within the U S uh, it's, it's that optimism that we're craving that we've needed. And I think that's one of my favorite things with Leyline is that community you guys have built is everyone wanting that, that feeling, that emotion, that empathy that we can do something with. And that's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's a good Kool-Aid to have <laughs> in the best way. Um, and still like, you know, oh gosh, I don't know. Yeah. Just the best Kool-Aid. <laughs> no, I know. I appreciate it. And you know what? That is probably the most powerful um, biological advantage that humanity has, which is our ability to delude ourselves. Because <laughs> uh, yeah. reality Possible. is really rough, you know, and we kind of have to like, you know, uh, delude ourselves. They're like, you know what, we could do this thing. And because of that delusion, we have accomplished amazing things because uh, we just believe we can make it happen. And in order to make crazy things happen, you first have to believe it's possible. Because then once you identify, okay, this is possible, then the probability of it happening rises tremendously. Uh, so yeah, our ability to lie to ourselves is actually quite good for our evolution. <laughs> I'll keep telling myself that. Yeah, yeah. it's important. <laughs> so we're approaching about an hour and a half. I don't know how much longer you guys wanted to keep going or if we wanted to wrap up, but... Uh... I would say it's up to Heather because Heather is a hero for being on this thing for this <laughs> long. Given how uh, you know, you know, thank you so much, Heather, for being on this uh, while you're fairly sick and exhausted. So she doesn't uh, look it. She doesn't sound it. Yeah, not at all. So <laughs> no. it's your call. It's your call, Heather. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good for hanging on a little bit more if we want to talk about anything else okay. uh, per se. Well, let's talk yeah, about something to... fun. I saw on Cody on your little blurb on the website uh you're a home brewer <laughs> yeah Can you tell me more and what oh. did you homebrew on um homebrew well i mean i i uh boy i just wasn't expecting that topic i'm so sorry <laughs> 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 now i'm craving a beer instantly so <laughs> there's a great documentary called how beer changed the world and or saved the world actually it was on netflix <laughs> before so I uh, just got into it when I had some friends who were doing it themselves. I'm like, wait, you made this? It's amazing. And it's just a, a fun way to be creative. You know, it's a, it's like culinary art. We don't think of as art, though culinary arts is an art. I mean, you, you are creating, you're producing. And so just the massive, I believe, next to infinite amount of potential in the combination of different grains and hops and additional flavors that you might be adding to it. I mean, even the alkal alkalinity of the water that you are using can <laughs> affect it. L like literally I was at That's the, uh, wow. I went to the brewery in Kona, Hawaii, the Kona brewing yeah. company. You may have, may have had their beers. They're delicious. Yeah, they're they're good, they have good stuff. And they have a, a, a factory i think i want to say it's in like milwaukee or no wisconsin or something like that and so when we're at the brewery in hawaii they're saying yeah our, our other bottling you know factory that's producing the same stuff they're following the same recipe they're making sure that the alkalinity of the water is the same as the water they're using in kona hawaii because when you go buy yourself a longboard lager mm -hmm. you want it to taste like a longboard lager no matter where you're no at where. so <laughs> yeah so we uh i i've been with a buddy um for for a few years now and so i have not been brewing in about a year he's uh he's has like some health issues so he had some pre-existing conditions and just so he's definitely hunkered down quite a bit and so it's been like i'm at home i should be brewing more but not with that to brew without my friend that just isn't all right so yeah. you could do the whole like uh breaking bad hazmat suit thing that might be oh <laughs> we joked about that because sometimes it does smell a little funny you know because <laughs> you got you got stuff fermenting in your house for a few weeks mm -hmm. you know it's a we, we usually spend a good two month process before you actually get to drink it and enjoy it and so <clears throat> We've had uh, just a lot of fun. One time we did a, a line of beers that were inspired by Girl Scout cookies. Oh, nice. So, wow. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. The Thin Mint Stout was good. Like it, out of the bottle, I think for the neck, it was like, this is amazing. It tastes kind of like a Thin Mint cookie. 
I'm kind of done with it. This is a little, yeah. weird. You know, like, it, it just, it, it was good for the gimmick, but not for like a long-term beverage, I mm -hmm. think. But my, my Samoa, is that the right word? The Samoa cookie, oh, you know, Samoa. the to the toasted coconut, coconut. yeah oh, i did a brown ale with that one. Oh my gosh it was amazing it was so, <laughs> so good cool. it, it wasn't overly sweet it but it but it, you could it, you just had to sit there and like hey there's a, a note of caramel wait there's the chocolate oh and there's like this toasted coconut finish it was just <laughs> wait, so, fantastic. so cody how did you infuse those flavors in there like what's that process did you like there are stuff girl scout cookies and no, 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 no. <laughs> just grind it up and put it in. <laughs> just like open up That's a packet. Like. <laughs> um, so just straight cocoa powder it, it works well. There are some grains um, uh, that that actually have certain flavor profiles that have more of a caramelly or more of a chocolate type of profile. Um, so, so adding those into the boil, like the, you know, you're boiling these things together, adding the, the hops and such. And, and then as it ferments, you can, that's another time where you can add certain things. And I actually added toasted pieces of coconut. And so the, the yeast, the, the funny way to try to explain it, like it eats a sugar and it essentially farts cal uh, uh, carbonation mm -hmm. and Chemistry. pees out alcohol. So like, that, I know. That's uh, I love it. That's, I love the way you say "fart" and "pee" as part of the process. That's great. <laughs> it's, it, it's it's part of the process. It's not used to gas. <laughs> okay, we could call it that. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, but but it will you know kind of extract some of those flavors throughout that fermentation process, and then uh, when you're ready to bottle it, there's a number of different ways you can do it. But one simple way is doing, you know, priming sugar, you make a little sugar solution and, and mix it in with the, the fermented wort. And so when you go to bottle it, it's, I know wort, it, it, they've got yeah, the weirdest yeah. names for this stuff. <laughs> um, you go to bottle it. Now, now the, the little bits of yeast that are still in there have a fresh supply of sugars, but now that it's in a contained bottle it's forcing the carbonation to stay in it while it's fermenting you have this little thing and it lets the carbonation out but now it's like infusing it in there and i even added in my my uh my sugar solution a little bit of like caramel syrup i'm not even sure if you're supposed Yum. to do it but why not let's try it you know and oh yeah and so it, it 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 the yeast eats up those sugars but there's still kind of a flavor profile that's left over and oh my gosh it's it's fun it's a lot of fun Sorry, that does that. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> no, that, did I just go that, on forever? That was fine. No, that's what I wanted. I was I was curious about the home brewing stuff because I'd never done it, and I I don't know if Heather would let me go down, <laughs> down that path. But uh, I do Let's like just craft say, beer. When he moved, when he moved, he had a homebrew kit. Oh yeah. And when he moved, we gave it to somebody else. We're like, ah. we're not gonna use this. You can have it. So we donated it to. Was it, was, it, was it one of the movers or who was it? It was somebody. It was the, the guy who installed the internet in the apartment. That's what it was. <laughs> oh, wow. Because yeah. we were passing Isn't stuff he... up. Or like, nice little gift. Think we're like, about we need all... to get rid of this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, think about all the yeast farting and peeing that you're missing out on. Yeah. I know. There we go. Consider... Was it one oh, of those man. Mr. Beer kits? Yeah. Was it? It was. It's that's how I started. It felt like home brewing with training wheels. Yeah, like, pretty much. This is my Fisher Price home brew kit. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's plastic. It was very, very. Wait, simple. what was that kid toy? The oven where it's like it was just literally a light bulb. To cook easy bake oven. Easy bake easy oven. Bake yes. Oven. <laughs> it's like easy bake. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Easy my bake mom brewery. never let me have one. She's like, we will bake real things. We are not using a light bulb. <laughs> yeah. For the best. It was oh for my the gosh. Best. Exactly. I still have my, my, uh, not my easy bake oven, my, my Mr. Beer kit, but I definitely evolved and started getting bigger equipment and, uh, what we fermented in, it's called a carboy, but it looks like a sparklets bottle, but it's glass. It's like a big glass sparklets bottle. It holds about, uh, five to six gallons in there. So that's, yeah. <laughs> that's badass. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. So to redirect and out, Cody, I don't know if you are a Blizzard fan. Are you a Blizzard Entertainment fan of any of the video games? I, it's okay if we out you. Yeah, <laughs> it's I, okay I, to say no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, I'm sure I've played some. Uh, when when WoW came out, I'm like, if I enter this, I will just live there. Like I will not. <laughs> yeah. uh, when, at least with a lot of my other RPGs, I grew up playing. It's like, hey, cool. I would do every side quest, every optional boss, and then finally beat the boss at like the highest level, and I could go. Okay, I'm done. You know what I mean? It, 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 like I uh, this game. Yeah, it's like <laughs> there's is there any end game here? Is it just gonna keep on going? Oh my gosh, I got I gotta have a life. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and family and children. All yeah. Right. And especially since having three kids uh who are all young, boy, it's been we, we we've been working through Kingdom Hearts 2. It's my second time playing it, but with my seven year old, and we've been playing for over a year. It's just it's so i don't know it's just there's so many distractions with oh yeah with my baby girl's doing something so my my gaming currently is basically pokemon go yeah. <laughs> that works. in uh oh man i wish i could say more but i cannot because uh, <laughs> my question uh, was going to be blizzcon online is happening in about two mm. three weeks and so I know next episode Jimmy and I are going to do on Nexus podcast is to kind of talk about like what we're excited about for Blizzard Entertainment games and so forth. So as I was like, Cody, do you know any Blizzard games? But uh, you are smart, sir. It took me three years of dating Jimmy, no, two years of dating Jimmy and not playing WoW. And I was like, I, I know you're obsessed with this game. I'm not going to play it. We can still be together. And I, I fell after two years. So... <laughs> Um, I know uh, I don't want to possibly get any uh, red flags or anything, Jeremy, because you used to work at Blizzard. But is there anything you're excited about with BlizzCon Online coming up? Is it not working there anymore? Yes. I think it would be very <laughs> bad form to let my lips go. Yeah, somewhere. please don't. Oh, okay. I don't want to <laughs> get in <laughs> trouble. Yeah. But I will say I'm very excited. I, I was very, very excited about the pipeline and roadmap for Blizzard. So I think you guys are going to be mm. very pleased to see uh, some of the announcements coming out. Uh, oh, cool. That's as much as I can say. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, yeah, like you know, without so we there's a number of different teams at Blizzard. You know, one, two, three, four, five, essentially for the different franchises, and then they have the incubation team, which is where we do a lot of experimentation and innovation, and you know, we do a bunch of like, hey, prototype this, prototype that, and you just kill projects that you know don't have the magic. Mm -hmm. Uh, so many of those are awesome, like really freaking awesome. Yeah, and even those may not make it to market. Um, so mm -hmm. the stuff that you're gonna see is gonna, like really top notch, awesome experiences. So yeah, I think you'll have a lot of fun uh, for BlizzCon Line this year, and that is as much as I can say. <laughs> <laughs> Darn! All right, next time then, or maybe yeah. after BlizzCon Online, you can tell us. <laughs> yeah, X Y Z that oh, came totally. out. Your opinion of it? Yeah, yeah, I can we'll, probably we'll, we'll pick your brain about it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, please. Uh, happy to share any retrospective stories for stuff that's like already announced. Um, but, you know, you know, the one that's most public, obviously, is Diablo Immortal. Uh, mm -hmm. That was like, it's a really funny story to develop in life cycle on that one. It's like crazy long, uh, but it's coming soon and it's good. It's quite good. I think you guys will enjoy it. Yeah, we're excited for it. We played it at the BlizzCon that it was announced at, so... We're yeah, definitely, we're definitely ready for it. Yeah, right. And actually, it's evolved a lot since then too. So it's uh, it's gonna be a really, really great product. I think you guys will like it. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna be playing, that's for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. maybe for that sure. could be something, Cody. You can get into. It's also on your phone. Mm -hmm. so oh yeah, that might be. Add it next to Pokemon Go. <laughs> and it's Diablo. It's yeah. in the. Diablo. It's Diablo. Okay. Yeah. So I remember playing that back in the day, the, the original one and such. So, exactly. um, Starcraft was theirs too, right? Yeah. Is is it still? I mean, or is it? I mean, I, I've lost track of that. I played. It's, it's still there, it's but it's got its very small core that is very uh -oh. dedicated, yeah. and Korea in particular is extremely strong, uh, both for StarCraft Two and StarCraft Remastered. So it's mm -hmm. probably one of the only regions that's like continuing to have a great tournament hmm. and esports ecosystem. Uh, so yeah, my my heart is there, but I I would say Warcraft Three was my my bane. I almost failed out of college because of Warcraft Three <laughs> and Counter Strike. Yeah. My routine was oh, no. I played I played Warcraft Three and Counter Strike all day long, skipped every single class for an entire <laughs> semester, and I would have my lunch brought to me by my girlfriend at the time, and then oh. um, would play volleyball at the end of the day, like as part of the team. So it was pretty bad. I was a bad student for that semester. 
And now he's the CEO off. of a company. <laughs> yeah. And here you go. There you go, kids. Uh, <laughs> Jeremy grew up in the trade. <laughs> uh, I paid my penance senior year. That was for sure. Man. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. That was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. Uh, so there you go. I ended up uh, at a, uh, with a job at Blizzard. <laughs> so maybe there's uh, some kind of uh, moral. You did get the degree, though. You did finish out. You finished yeah, out yeah. Out. I did finish my degree. Yeah. That was very key. That's that the important. moral of the story. Is finish <laughs> yeah. out your degree. Yes. So uh, whatever downs you may have, there is always redemption. I really want to say that. As far low as you can go, you can always pick yourself back up. And don't be discouraged if you're ever in a rut. I, that one I can attest to. And uh, mm. you will have people to support you as well. <laughs> don't forget that too. You're not yep. alone. Right. This got very personal. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <I'm sorry>. I know. <laughs> Went from uh, homebrew to like college difficulty. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I think, yeah, I think how long are we now going, Jimmy? 10, it 18. is almost two hours. Yeah. Oh, good. And we're close yeah. enough. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And Heather, you need to rest. That's very important. Get yes. some nice sleep and, you know, yeah. bolster up Go that immune bed. system. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My voice is already starting to get a little crackly. Though. I'm like, yeah, this is about time. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, thank you guys for coming on. We really, really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's our looking pleasure. forward to the next update next quarter uh, of what Leyline has in store because you guys are not even close to done yet, but you guys are. So making much progress, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah, but again, if you're if you're watching the show and you're li or listening and you're interested to see what Leyline is doing, Leyline.gg, you can sign up there and also scroll down to the bottom of the website and all the links to their social media is there. Like we were talking about earlier, their Discord community is really growing rapidly, and you can get yourself involved in a number of different ways if you're talented in a certain field i'm sure they could find something for you if you want to contribute mm -hmm. or or learn from their um team Not of experts <laughs> yeah and we welcome anybody and everybody we are here to help you guys out we're here to help humanity so you are all humans and we love you so come on join us yeah definitely. <laughs> like some gift cards that's what I want. yes get paid get paid for doing good as like that's, that's the simplest way we could even position that. <laughs> yeah yeah we will pay you so all right yeah I'll all right well you know, and thank you guys so much uh really we're honored to be here and grateful mm -hmm. so really appreciate the opportunity yeah thank you guys so much again this is a special episode of the nexus podcast with leyline thank you again for coming on the show and updating us on what's going on and how quickly things can change over a couple of months and how you've pivoted to react to how how things have have changed <laughs> But uh, any any closing uh, words before we, like we log off? How to get a hold of you guys mm. or anything? Cody. Yeah, I'll let you go first. Closing remarks, boy. You yeah, you can do it. You can make a difference in this world. Do good, and we are working on a way to reward good. I mean, it's do good stuff, get good stuff. You know, I'm very <laughs> excited to be a part of it. Come be a part of it. Encourage your friends to be a part of it. We're gonna work together. You know, teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> All that. <laughs> yeah, my friend. And, you know, I, you know, to add on to that, I think we are all human beings and we're all citizens of the planet. We love everybody. We could do so much more uh, together. And we just want to create that opportunity for everybody. So, um, yeah, hopefully we can accomplish that mission and get you guys paid for doing good that is like the essence of it we're gonna fix this <laughs> freaking broken economy there you go yeah fix the system and make the world better and we can't do that until we all come together to make it happen so we're gonna make it easy for you that's that's the plan and love love is the key we all like <laughs> love is the answer love conquers yep. all and, you know, I think there's nothing wrong with an abundance of love. And we're going to create that um, starting with our team and our culture and our community and to the planet. That is the that is the pathway for us. That's awesome. And yeah, we'll we'll close out the show with that. And we'll see you guys next time for another episode of the Nexus podcast. Uh, this is Jimmy and Heather signing off. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, guys, so much. See you later.